during the last video the baffle cone split open on this exhaust and it uh, showed that there's quite a bit of pressure inside it even started to split um, I thought about trying to repair them both of them did it um, it didn't work too well with the um, that's one mil thick aluminium and this piece was getting too hot to fuse just well what wants us to melt away so I made some uh, some new cones and these are 1.5 instead of one mil and it's butt welded instead of that flange hopefully this time it won't blow apart before I start playing around with cyclic control in the next hover test I'm going to drop this shaft I'll drop the top rotor down, reduce the length of the shaft. It's 650 mil from the top pin to the bottom pin. And I'm going to do, reduce that to 430. I left it long because I wasn't sure what distance is needed between the two rotors. When Later on, if you get into the point where you're getting forward flight and dissymmetry of lift, the two rotor blades go closer together and that is a concern but on previous models like the Nolan helicopter um, I think that's 300 mil spacing I think 10% is probably where it should be so I'm going to go for 430 10% the rotor diameter and we'll see how that goes It took quite a bit of figuring out all this drive and I'll try and explain what's going on. So that nut on the bottom is holding two taper rollers there. There's a taper roller there and there and they're pulling against each other with the nut. Um, inside that hub I can't see it, um, is a taper lock bushing. So that clamps this pulley to the shaft. And there's also a sleeve on the, the shaft so that when you tighten that nut up, it pulls those two bearings together. Next, there's another spacer there and inside here uh, there's a bearing in that top pulley and all that's doing is just providing support when the belt pulls on the pulley it supports it and then there's another supporting bearing there inside the shaft goes up there's a sleeve in between that as well there's a sleeve there so I've turned down this shaft all the way down to the nut and so this sleeve can't go that way and there's a taper bush taper bearing on the top rotor head so trying to figure this out it certainly took a minute or two plus also you've got to figure out how you're going to get it together and apart because you can design something and then figure out well there's no way of getting it together so that certainly was challenging as well I chose to do the belt reversing on the driven pulley rather than on the driving but I could have done it on the driving I don't think there was any issue with doing it that way round I chose this way to keep the weight further forward but I don't see any problem with doing it on the on the drive side if you wanted to. I wasn't looking forward to doing that. But there, it's done. Now I need to cut 220mm off that and then weld that back to that. Only joking. The next thing to do is to remake the square section and that was heat shrunk onto that shaft. 
I made it uh, last time it was point 0.1 of interference once once heated up so we need to work out what size I can have the hole and what temperature I need to heat it to so the shaft is 25.4 millimeters diameter I want point 0.1 of interference when it's cold so 25.3 so I need to know what temperature I need to get it to uh, carbon steel expands at 12 microns per meter per degree and 25.4 is 39.37 times smaller than a meter so if we divide 12 microns by 39.37 we get 0 0.000348 millimeters per degree celsius I want the hole to measure 25.5 when it's hot and so I want 0 0.2 of a mil of expansion and 0 0.2 divided by that 0 0.000348 gives us 656 Celsius and that is blood red uh, by colour. That's cooled now. All that's left to do is drill the hole right through. It'll have to be um, drilled and reamed and nice and accurate. I'll do that in the milling machine and then I can press this, this pin into the hole. The only slight concern this time is I'm, I got it a bit hotter than I did last time and if too much heat has been transferred into the shaft, which is EN24T, and it might have case hardened it so that could be a problem might have to use a carbide cutter and um, well we'll see what happens with that otherwise that'll be okay I think